Hey kids, welcome to Crossways Kid Venture Kids Online. I'm Lauren and this is Maya. Hi everybody! In case you're new at Kid Venture Kids Online, I should let you know that Kid Venture Kids is a great place for kids to learn about God, faith, and even life apps. What are life apps? Life apps are just our way of talking about what God can work out inside of you to change the world around you. Things like love, respect, and forgiveness. And don't forget that we do that with a lot of faith field fun to help you grow your faith in Jesus Christ. And don't forget, putting your faith into action kid style. Hey, you can even stand up, sing, and dance with the worship music. And now it's time to get started. Let's start with a drum roll on your knees, everybody. Three, two, one. Jesus is what Christmas is 
is one star shining the brightest heaven couldn't contain the greatest news shepherds couldn't believe it wise men wanted to see it god was sending his only son to Everyone is part of a bigger story. It's a bigger story than you can imagine. It's a big story about a really big God. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Hey, I'm Caleb, and this beautiful glowing orb is my Bible. Did you know the Bible is like a library? 66 separate books filled with wisdom, true stories, poetry, letters, visions, and songs. Oh. <laughs> God inspired dozens of people over hundreds of years to write down his words so that we can read them today. Opening up God's word is like unwrapping an awesome Christmas gift because inside we discover the amazing truth of how God loves us so much he sent his very own son to live with us. And that, my friends, is what Christmas is all about. So let's get started in the New Testament, in the first chapter of Luke. There we go. Not one word from God has been recorded in hundreds of years. But then God sends the angel Gabriel to a priest named Zechariah. The angel's message is extraordinary. Zechariah's wife, Elizabeth, is gonna have a baby, even though she's old enough to be a great grandma. Zechariah voices his doubts until the angel leaves him speechless. Gabriel's work isn't done yet, as we see later in the chapter. Okay, here, Gabriel appears to a young woman named Mary, with another birth announcement. <laughs> Gabriel tells her she's about to be the mother of the biggest VIP of all time. 
God's own son. And even though she must have like a gazillion questions, Mary says, okay. Nine months later, that baby is about to be born, as we see in Luke 2. Mary and her husband Joseph make a road trip to Bethlehem to be counted. By order of the Roman emperor. So every room in town is filled. So Mary and Joseph have to take whatever they can get. God's son, Jesus, is born into a place with some very unusual roommates. And his birth is announced by some extremely unusual messengers. We wrap up in the book of Matthew. Here, some wise men far to the east have spotted a brand new star in the sky. They know this star means the birth of a new king. So the wise men set out on a desert adventure to celebrate the new king. And their baby shower gifts? Uh, they're a big step up from diapers and onesies. <laughs> Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, and the wise men all experience God's amazing love through the birth of his son, Jesus. And we can too. Now that's something to celebrate. I'm Haley. I gotta say, I am just about to burst with excitement. <laughs> it's that time of year. You know, presents are being wrapped, people are singing songs on the street corner, everyone around me is so jolly. It's the one time of year I can even get away with using the word jolly. I don't have to tell you what time of year it is. Christmas is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. You see, it's all about celebrating. And one of the ways I like to celebrate is by decorating! There's only one thing missing. Hmm. Yee! Yay! They say the Christmas lights are bright at Christmas, at Christmas. Oh my, um, hmm. <laughs> Whoa, well, this is a mess. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> How did this happen? The lights were untangled when I put them in the box last year. Are they moving around in there? Oh, I'll never be able to untangle all of this. This is impossible. Uh. Well, suddenly, I don't feel like celebrating anymore. Isn't it strange how sometimes you feel like celebrating and then something happens that makes celebrating impossible? Well, in today's story, you'll see how there's always some reason to celebrate, even when things seem impossible. Hey, maybe I could use these lights the way they are. Yeah, yeah. E earrings, earrings, maybe? Hey! What's the big idea? Hey! What's the big idea? Celebrate because God can do anything!
The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 1. Zechariah and Elizabeth lived in the hill country of Judah. Both Zechariah and Elizabeth came from the family line of priests. But while many priests made a big show of their work just to impress other people, Zechariah and Elizabeth actually loved and served God. Dear God, help us to follow your commands in all we say and do. And please, please give us a child. Through many long years, Zechariah and Elizabeth had been unable to have children. Bless their hearts. They must have done something wrong for God to let this happen. But God wasn't punishing Zechariah and Elizabeth. In fact, one year Zechariah got an amazing opportunity. His group of priests gathered about twice a year in Jerusalem to serve God in the temple. Zechariah, you've been chosen. Me? <gasps> to go inside the holy place? Each year, one priest was selected to enter the temple and burn incense before God. Now, with 1,000 priests in this group, this could have been a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Wow. Okay. I'm ready. As the other priests waited outside, praying to the Lord, Zechariah entered the beautiful holy place of the temple. Carefully, from a golden censer, he spread incense over glowing coals on the altar. The fragrance filled the air like the prayers of the priests outside. There, all done. But as Zechariah turned to go, bright light blazed up on the right side of the altar. <gasps> oh, a dazzling angel towered over the altar. Zechariah stumbled back. Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Oh, uh, uh, thank you. Which prayer? Your wife, Elizabeth, will have a child. A child? Zechariah struggled to think clearly. It will be a boy, and you must call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you. His birth will make many people very glad. He will be important in the sight of the Lord and filled with the Holy Spirit. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will prepare the way for the Lord. That's, uh, but Elizabeth, uh, how can I be sure of this? We're both old enough to be great grandparents. The light burned even brighter and Zechariah shielded his eyes. I am Gabriel. I serve God. I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will have to be silent. You will not be able to speak until after John is born. That's because you did not believe my words. They will come true at the time God has chosen. Zechariah tried to respond, but no sound came from his lips. These words will come true at the time God has chosen. The light flared and then dimmed. Zechariah found himself alone again. Stunned, he staggered out of the temple. There you are. What took so long? Zechariah opened his mouth, but still no words came out. Uh, didn't catch that. Zechariah gestured wildly, attempting to explain. <gasps> oh, charades. I love charades. Um, mouth, duck lips, open, shut. Oh, 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 you can't talk. Why not? Something tall, wings, um, ostrich, flamingo. Aha, angel. You saw an angel. Although he couldn't speak, Zechariah finished his time of service and returned home. And in a short time, Elizabeth found out that she would indeed have a child. The Lord has done this. He has been kind to me. At last, the time came for Elizabeth to have her baby. Well, bless your heart if he don't have quite the pair of lungs. He's beautiful. Just look at that head of hair. Eight days after the baby was born, friends and relatives gathered for his naming. 
His name will be Zachariah, of course. Oh, after his daddy. No, he must be called John. John? Honey, nobody in your family has that name. It ain't right. Everyone turned to Zechariah. Zechariah, that boy needs a proper name. Still unable to speak, Zechariah gestured. Oh, 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 charades again. Hold on. A uh, stick, a uh, carrot, a. Uh, ooh, he needs something to write with. As soon as Zechariah had a tablet and quill in hand, he wrote quickly. What does that say? I can't see. His name is John. Well, bless my heart if Zachariah ain't talking again. <laughs> Praise God! His name is John! John, you like that, don't you, little one? Everyone was filled with fear and wonder as the news spread through the hill country. It was clear the Lord was with John. What is that child gonna be? So what seemed impossible had become possible. God had given Zechariah and Elizabeth a child in their old age. God had taken away Zechariah's speech and then returned it. And then, when John grew older, he would play a very important role in introducing his cousin to the world, Jesus. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. So anyone who believes in him will not die, but have eternal life. Ready for the Christmas photo? I am. I, right. I just keep feeling like we're forgetting something. Kellen! Oh. We gotta have Kellen in the picture. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I got it. What? We'll uh, just leave some space in between us oh. and then we can put them in later. That's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that should do it. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah. One, two, three. Show and Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! As you can see, we're ready to celebrate the big day and the entire Christmas season all month long. Yeah, some of us are more ready than others, Brandon. <laughs> that is true. John here has gone above and beyond preparing this year. Yeah, in my opinion, nothing says Merry Christmas and Jesus is born quite like 25,000 twinkling Christmas lights. Wait, wait, there are 25,000 Christmas lights oh, here? Oh yeah, and I'm ready to light them all up and let the Christmas celebration begin! All right, well, I guess uh, without further ado, yeah. uh, do you want me to do a drum roll or something? Oh, that'd be great. Okay, uh, That's half decent. Here we go. Three, two, one, boom! Are they supposed to? Yeah, hold on, hold on. Wait, oh, uh, the plug was up there. Okay, right. ready? Three, <laughs> two, <laughs> one. <laughs> Come on. Three, two, one. Three. Uh, okay. I don't think you're supposed to shake them like that. I don't understand. They were just working earlier. Well, I can picture it in my mind, and it's breathtaking. Oh. 
Thanks, Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's probably a bad bulb if one goes out and, you know, the whole thing doesn't work. Yeah, I guess I'll just need to check each and every one of them. Oh, good idea. Hey, if you need any help, I'll be here doing the show. I appreciate that. Sure thing. Hey, why don't we do a little quiz? I can't do a quiz. I'm checking the bulbs. No, I was talking to them. Oh, right. So get ready to challenge your friends, challenge your neighbors, or just challenge yourself. It's time to play How Bright Are Your Lights? Challenge these lights. How bright are your lights? Here's how it works. I'll ask you a holiday-themed trivia question, true, false, and it's up to you to shout out the answer from wherever you are. This machine here will measure all of your responses. Green light for true, red light for false. If most of you get the right answer, I will eat a bite of John's Aunt Margaret's 24-year-old fruitcake. Hey, I was saving that. For what? I don't know. Here we go. First question. <clears throat> Thomas Edison invented electric Christmas tree lights. Is that true or false? Shout out your answers. All right, we got some trues, we got some falses. Where is it gonna land? Uh -huh. All right, time's up. It looks like most of you picked true, and the answer is... Oh, can I say, can I say? Uh, sure, go right ahead. The answer is true. He did it in New York City. Correct. <laughs> In 1882, Edison decorated a Christmas tree in New York City with 80 blinking red, white, and blue electric lights. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now you have to eat the fruitcake. Uh, you got to yeah. eat the fruitcake. I cake. thought you were testing lights. Right. I... Oh, man, I lost my place. Here we go. Hmm. Next question. <clears throat> Christmas lights can be powered by electric eels. Is that true or false? Shout it out now. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm hearing, I'm seeing some things. All right, and time is up, and it looks like most of you said false, and the correct answer is true. Uh. You missed that one. The Enoshima Aquarium in Japan powers their Christmas lights with electric eels. And they can produce up to 800 watts of electricity. Whoa, I escaped the cake. That's great. Question three, 20 million pounds of Christmas lights are recycled every year. True or false? You got a guess, John? Uh, don't talk to me, I don't want to lose my place. Okie dokie, let's hear your answers, go. Well, they think, oh, okay, and the majority of you think that it is true, and the answer is true. <laughs> Over 20 million pounds of lights are shipped to Shijiao, China every year to be recycled into new Christmas lights or other products such as furniture, ornaments, or slippers. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to wear slippers made out of Christmas lights. Yeah, it does seem like a strange thing to make. Yeah. Hey, I thought you didn't want us to talk to you. <laughs> All right, here it goes. Yeah. Oh. No. I, I like how it stains mm -hmm. things. I do not want another bite of that, okay? Get this one wrong. Ugh. You're missing out. Last question. In San Diego, California, if lights are kept up past February 2nd, homeowners are subject to jail time. True or false? Well, whoever made these lights deserves jail time. I'm telling you that. <laughs> no! All right, shout out your final answers now. <laughs> okay, time is up. You say it's false, and the answer is... False! They don't throw you in jail for keeping your lights up in February, but there is a $250 fine, which I would gladly pay if I could avoid eating this fruitcake. But a deal's a deal. Okay. That is not good. Hmm. Huh. Thanks for playing, everybody. How's it going, John? <laughs> Not well.
<laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, what's up? Oh, don't talk to John. He's checking Christmas lights. Uh, they're not working for some reason. Wow. He's got a lot of them. Oh, yeah. Over 25,000. Well, why don't you take a break and help me tell today's Bible story? It's the story before the Christmas story. <laughs> why not? Well then, to the theater! <laughs> There was a priest named Zechariah. I'm a priest, and I've been doing that a long time. <laughs> and his wife, Elizabeth. I'm his wife, and I've been doing that an even longer time. <laughs> they loved and served God faithfully for many years, but had been unable to have children. Oh, dear God. Thank you for the many blessings you've poured out on us. We are truly grateful. Truly grateful. But even though we are now old, we would still like to have a child. I have a rattle and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One day, Zechariah was chosen to go into the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. His job was to burn incense as a way to honor God. Mmm, nothing like the smell of burning incense. <laughs> While he was there, an angel appeared. Zachariah! Ooh! Oh, stay back! <laughs> I've got this burning ball of sweet smell, and I'm not afraid to use it. Do not be afraid, Zachariah. Hmm? Do not be afraid? <laughs> you disappeared out of nowhere. Who are you anyway? I am Gabriel, and I am here to tell you God has heard your prayers. Oh? Ooh, which prayer are you talking about? The, the, the one about the donkey? He's doing much better now. <laughs> your wife, Elizabeth, will have a child. Say what? It will be a boy, and you must call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will prepare the way for the Lord. <laughs> oh, come on! We can have a baby, we're too old! <laughs> Who put you up to this? Was it Meshik? I mean, oh, no, maybe it was Ooze. Ooze? <laughs> oh, no. I have been sent by God oh. to speak to you and tell you this good news. But because you did not believe my words, you will be unable to speak until after John is born. Zechariah returned home to Elizabeth, still unable to speak. You're saying, I have big news. Oh, really, I do too. I'm going to have a baby. Oh, oh. You're saying, I know. An angel told me. Really? After a few months, or nine, Elizabeth had her baby. You know, all the neighbors think we should call you Zachariah Jr. after your papa. My Aunt Gertrude wanted your name to be Ezekiel. They call you EZ for short. My dad thought it should be Bob. No, John! His name! We'll be John! I know, that's what I told them. Oh, thank you, thank you. Wait, I can talk. I can talk! Yeah! I don't need your flags! Get out of my hands! Once again, God proved he can do anything. Zachariah and Elizabeth were blessed with a child in their old age. A baby who would grow up to be known as John the Baptist. And God had a very special job for John. John would help introduce his cousin, Jesus, to the world, and he would announce God's plan to rescue his people. The end. Or, technically, the beginning. Now that's a way to start off a celebration. 
God knows how to set the scene for a story. I'll say. Thanks, Kellen. See ya. Catch you later. You know, John, it's amazing when you really think about the fact that there is nothing God can't do. I mean, he can do things that we think are impossible. There's a reason to celebrate God every day, don't you think? Yes, I do. I'm just celebrating on the inside. Oh, good to hear. Reveal the question. What are some things you celebrate? Oh, well, there's uh, birthdays, uh, half birthdays, A test days. What's an A test day? You know, when you get an A on a test. Oh. <laughs> Happened twice at my house. My, my sister's really smart. Or it doesn't have to be a day. You can celebrate when you do well at a soccer game or when you finally finish putting away the dishes. Or, or when God does something really amazing in your life. Yeah. Are you really going to check every single box? Well, what else can I do, well, Brandon? I don't know. Have you, did you check to make sure the extension cord was plugged into the wall? <laughs> do you think I'd really check all of these bulbs if I wasn't sure the extension cord wasn't plugged into the wall? <laughs> I'm going to go check the extension cord. <laughs> I forgot to plug in the extension cord. <laughs> So, let's try this again. All right, you want me to do the drum roll? No, 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 that's fine. Don't try so hard. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh! Wow! Oh. Yes! Wow, these really are amazing! Yeah? Oh, you haven't seen the half of it. There's more? Oh! Oh, you know, I, I think maybe that's a little too much. Really? Yeah, yeah, maybe just a little. Wow. Oh, okay. We'll, uh, we'll see you next week for a brand new show uh, all about celebrating Christmas. Yeah, I, I hope we'll see you then. My eyes are starting to hurt. Hey, guys. So, I'm here for the Christmas photo shoot. Guys? John? Brandon? Guess I could do the photos myself. <laughs> all right, here we go in three, two, one. What's the big idea? Hey! What's the big idea? Celebrate because God can do anything. As I was thinking about today's story, an idea occurred to me. One thing I can celebrate today. So Zechariah and Elizabeth were too old to have children. It was impossible, but God made it happen. They had John who would grow up to introduce his cousin, Jesus, to the world. Nothing is impossible for God. He can do anything. Here's why that's worth celebrating. There are things in our lives that seem impossible could be a tough subject at school, could be a problem you're having at home, or a disagreement you're having with a friend. Your problem could be so bad, you think you'll never be able to untangle it. But if God is able to give life, then he's able to give you knowledge and wisdom to get through that tough subject in school. If God is powerful enough to control the weather, then he's powerful enough to help you weather any storms that come your way. And if God can bring peace to the whole world through the sacrifice of his son, then he can bring peace to your life and in your relationships. God can do anything. So here's the one thing to remember today. Celebrate because God can do anything. I'm not sure if God will physically come down here and do something about my uh, problem, but if he can create the universe from nothing, then I believe that he can give me the patience, determination, and creativity I need to untangle these lights. Hmm. And that makes me want to celebrate. Yay! Merry Christmas! <sighs>
here goes. See you next time. I remember thinking when I was a little bit smaller That all my days would be filled with happiness and fun But then I discovered it's not that easy Some days can get you down but the rest is up to us I won't hesitate to see something great Cause I choose, I choose joy, joy. And a little bit of laughter To spin some bad luck into a real good time It doesn't matter what life brings You gotta focus on the bright side We can be thankful, we can be grateful The choice is yours and mine I won't hesitate to see something great Cause I choose, I choose joy, joy. Christmas joy